Hi, Greg Howell here with uh, what used to be my dad's 1965 Ford Mustang. As we go through this walk around, you will see it is no longer the original Ford Mustang. Uh, but I did get to drive it in high school and college. My dad did an okay restoration on it over 30 years ago, made it a driver. And then he parked up behind his workshop and it was in pretty bad shape when I picked it up finally uh, in 2012. A uh, little backstory with the car too. My dad purchased this in 1966. He was a second owner. So it's been in the family all these years. But uh, I acquired the car in 2012 and it sat in my garage for about seven years before we started the restoration. And in 2019, I took it down to Wimberley, Texas. A good friend of mine by the name of Dave Nolan. He owns a garage, it's called uh, Lost Garage. And he's been working on these old Mustangs for probably 35 years. And I had met Dave back in the early 2000s and started talking about Mustangs. We both found out we liked Mustangs and he had a bunch of them. And I knew right away I wanted Dave to do the rebuild on me. He just he's, has so much knowledge on these old cars and he does a lot of custom work. So I finally talked him into taking this project on back at the end of 2019 and finally the car came back to me in February of 2023. And here we are today at Lancaster for the Warbirds and Wheels show and met up with Eric. We've been trying to do this walk around video for a while so here we are. We're going to do it. Uh, so that's a little history on the car and for those of you the first thing you may ask what color is it? It's ivy green. It's the original color that came on the car. There is not a part on this car that did not get touched during the restoration. Um, pretty much everything that you will see today is brand new and updated, modernized. Uh, the only original parts left are the shell. We had to replace the two doors in the hood. So the shell in the trunk original and the wiper arms original. That's pretty much it. So um, started down that rabbit hole. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a lady buys a new dress. Well, now she's got to have a new pair of shoes, a new handbag. So, you know, you start modifying these cars, uh, you know, putting a bigger engine in it. Well, now you got to have the suspension to go with it. And then you got to have the brakes to handle it. And so it, it's a rabbit hole. It, 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 if you want it right, what I wanted was a, a fun, safe car to drive. These old cars were pretty cool to drive, but they weren't real fun because manual brakes, no power steering. The suspension was really bad. Um, and the drum brakes were horrible. They always locked up on you. So I wanted something, like I said, it was fun and safe to drive. And we did it. Dave did it, man. He did it. I call it a piece of art, what he did with it. Um, so here's the exterior. And we can go under the hood now, if you'd like. Originally, it was a 289 four-speed. And I decided I wanted something with a little more power. Even though it says 289, it's kind of try to fool everybody. It's a 347 stroker. It's got uh, Fitech EFI on it. Yeah, you can tell we're still at the airport. Uh, I think it's MSD ignition. Uh, we went with uh, the vintage air for the front end because that's where we got our the AC. We updated the AC in the car. And so they sell a whole complete kit that's got the front end mounts with all your components, your alternator your power steering pump, your compressor for the AC. It's a serpentine system now. Beauty of this is if one of these components goes out, I take the part number down to the local part shop and replace it. I don't have to go looking for an old an old thing. Bigger radiator. Uh, mine, and I think other Mustangs older, they were notorious for having heating issues. And now went with the bigger engine, we definitely wanted a bigger radiator. We moved the battery to the trunk. A uh, couple of reasons, a little more weight in the back and heat you know, will make the life of a battery uh, be a lot less. We think it's putting out about 400 horsepower. Uh, we hadn't dynoed it yet, but uh, it certainly feels like it, and the car only weighs like 3,000, 3,100 pounds, so. We can take a look at the, I, I like this old style look. It's, it's, it's an electronic fuel injection, but it looks like an old four barrel carburetor. And you got the, the breather on it, and I really like that. It's electronically controlled. It's got its own little computer system. There's a handheld in the car that you can do all types of programming on this and set different limits and stuff. But it also self-learns. As you, the more you drive it, it fine tunes itself. Let's see if I can 
not hit the hole. And this little thing here, it actually allows it to pull in more air. It's just uh, the uh, aerodynamic effect that it has. There's your uh, brake master cylinder there. It's a bare brake system uh, for the four-wheel disc brakes. And what it's got a hydraulic clutch in it too. So instead of having a separate reservoir, what Dave did, he tapped into the brake reservoir and that goes down to the clutch. Uh, we added, the car didn't come with the window wash system, so we added that. I don't drive it in the rain, but just in case. Uh, JBY headers with an X-pipe, uh, we had those ceramic coated, cuts down on the heat in the engine compartment. What else? The, new, the fan, I love this fan. We originally had one electric fan, oh, didn't have a mechanical fan, it had an electric fan, and we were having some overheating issues. Dave went in and put in a sec, sec, second electrical fan between the AC condenser and the radiator. We were still having heat issues. So he said, all right, we're gonna go back to a mechanical fan. This is a flex fan, six blade, thin aluminum. You can see it's... When the car's idling, you've got that big pitch on the blade, so it's pushing a lot of air. And one drawback from mechanical fans is that as you go faster, it's it's the engine sometimes can have, it takes power from the engine, basically what I'm trying to say. This one, when you hit the RPMs up, these blades flex and flatten out. So there's no drag, but it's still pushing a lot of air because it's going so fast. And we solved our heating issues with that. You know, as hot as it is here in Texas right now, I go down the highway, it never gets above 180. So it's really cool. Uh, we added, did some mods. I, my goal in this whole thing was to make the car look as original as we could, but I wanted a couple of different mods on it, so we went with the GT Valance with the air scoop in it, so we get a little more airflow through there. Added the GT fog lights. Every light on this car, inside and outside, are all LED, which I love because they're so bright, and I mean, you can see so good at night. retractable radio antenna <laughs> it's not working right right now it'll go up but it won't go down I'm probably just gonna live with it because to get into that antenna motor you've got to take the whole fender off and it's just a pain so I'm I, and I just Bluetooth I've got updated radio it looks cla like the classic radio but it's uh, from uh, I think from American Auto Sound I believe no classic car audio I've got Bluetooth so I just put my iPhone up to it and listen to some good tunes didn't have a mirror on the right side. I added the mirror because I like the look. Uh, the wheels are Scott Drake wheels, I believe. Uh, absolutely love the wheels. Everybody compliments me on them. Put bigger tires on it than original. As you can probably see they did roll the fenders out just a little bit before paint. They just, just kind of pull them out a little bit so you get the tire clearance. Uh, and those tires, I man, there's a lot of rubber on the ground with these, so they really handle good. You can see there we did an update on the stereo, uh, not just the show itself, but the speakers. We've got JBL speakers in it, uh, the two in the back here. And, and I like the way we had to get this new deck that angles the speaker up so you get a little more sound projection. But the other thing is that there's some stuff you'll see in a minute in the trunk that the speakers would not clear if they were flat on the deck. And then, you know, there's so many aftermarket parts for these Fords. I mean, just you could go to a catalog and build a, a Mustang. But, so updated speaker, there's one little speaker in there on the original, now it's like a double cone JBL speaker, so I get sound projection out of the front. And again, you can see in the back, we did the GT Valance back here because I love the look of the exhaust coming out of the back. This car did not have backup lights on it originally, so we added those, and of course those are LEDs. Here's something that's cool. I didn't know Dave was going to do this. I can use the key. And then he put in a remote trunk release for me. So this is part of the Phytech system that goes to the EFI. Uh, 
on a bigger gas tank it's a 22 gallon gas tank which is bigger than the original this is an electric fuel pump and it feeds it's all computerized through the FITEC there's an ECU inside the EFI um, one issue that I had with it uh, recently was that when you first turn the key on it primes for about 10 seconds shoot a little bit of gas and it sort of starts that's the beauty about the EFI is when they're working right it's not like an old carburetor you're out there stomping on the gas pedal and cranking cranking it usually start the first key turn but the primer stops so we sent it back and they sent us another one and there you can see the battery so we put it in the back upgraded battery and my JBL amp with the subwoofer behind it and uh, behind the rear seat that's other than getting under the car which we're not going to video that but I do have coilovers that are fully adjustable all around uh, I love them you can set the ride height by adjusting some things on it you can set how soft or how hard the ride is um, which I really love originally called Palomino, a little bit darker. Um, we went with parchment, it's a little lighter, so I think on a classic car it just kind of makes the interior pop a little bit. Um, we went with a five-speed manual instead of the old four-speed. This is part of the FITEC ECU where you can do the programming and stuff and you can read certain uh, parameters from the engine off of that. That really helps when you're tuning the engine Dakota Digital Dash, I love it because I like, I wanted that classic look. I didn't want the individual round dials, so it looks almost identical to the original. It's got the needle sweep, but it's got a tack, which I didn't have before, so that's really good. The AC system from Vintage Air, this car originally had just this one box sitting right here. That's all we had, two vents on it. And funny thing is, you know, when I went back and got the car and 2012, and I don't know how many years it had been sitting in the workshop. For a long time, the AC still worked. I couldn't believe it. But I wanted something a little, little better. And the cool thing about this system is that these are the original type controls. Usually when you move these, they pulled a cable or something and open a door, closed a door. That was your fan speed. But this, it looks original, but it's all electronic behind it. So when you move a lever, it's electronically controlling the AC. Um, we added the fog lights that you saw. This is a switch for the fog lights over here. Um, that's a radio. Yep, that's the radio. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but you'll hear the, maybe hear the fuel pump prime. Yep. I like my, I like my music, so I wanted some good sound. So, I'll crank it up going down the highway. Uh, we added the dome light. This car did not have a dome light. All it had was you can't see them probably here because it's too right. There were two lights underneath here and they'd shine on the floor. We didn't have anything up here, so we added that. Oh, here's another cool thing we did. Check this out. Electric windows front and back. So anytime somebody rides with me, I always tell them, hey, that's not a window crank, so don't go cranking on it. You know, it's just a switch. Uh, we also added... Uh, the alarm system with electric door locks, which I think is pretty cool. Nice. Oh, we went with uh, seat belts with shoulder harnesses. All this had was a lap belt originally. So I wanted a little bit of extra safety factor with that. But like I said, I mean, everything is new. And this, it, the car drives just as good as it looks. So I've been having a blast with it. Um, taking it to some shows. Maybe one day, uh, Dave, my builder, he has done this road race out in West Texas. Goes between, I think Fort Stockton and some little town about 50 miles south, and it's a timed race. And um, he's run that one a few times. I'd like to go out there and do that. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, other than that, I don't plan on getting on the track with it and racing against other cars. <laughs> It'll just mess it up. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the walk around. Uh, 
hope uh, I was able to give you some good information, maybe inspire some of the other guys out there that are that are building these. Um, it's it's been a long time coming. I'm absolutely having a blast with the car, and in fact, I think we're going to go drive it right now.